Bad North is one of those very obscure but charming games that you just happen to find when you're at your girlfriend's house for Thanksgiving and her sister's friend, who just so happens to be a beta tester for some indie games, is playing this specific game and it catches your eye due to how amazingly gorgeous it is. Although being incredible eye candy, the mechanics of the gameplay, the characters, the UI, and strategy you can implement during these sessions are very smooth and enjoyable to use. It's a testament that a top-down survival island slash domination game can be very complex but not overbearing. Oscar Stauberg, the lead artist, Richard Meredith, the programmer, and Martin Kovet Kov Kovet Kvalum, I said that right, the sound designer, teamed up to create a charming but brutal real-time tactics roguelite, which is an extremely accurate description that I totally thought of. Plausible Concept did a fantastic job harboring a very visually appealing style for this game. Going all in with the Viking aesthetic, the font, layout of the menus, shields placed throughout the UI, and the specific pattern that reflects Norse writings set the tone before we even begin our aquatic trek to distant lands. Once we look at the map here with slightly animated waves and see the islands with their specific landscapes just by looking at the map, both of which are great additions, we step foot on land, taking in the sheer beauty of the animation, consisting of the island itself, the characters, and the water which surrounds us. Once we take our first steps, the slight audible pace of the Nordic army fills our ears. This is the work of Martin Kavala, the one who enhances the atmosphere of the world. His first tribute is at the very beginning, where the menu plays a low, simple melody that signifies the emptiness, awaiting terror, and moments of loneliness with one instrument. When enemies appear, a very distinct low sound shoots through the air, as if Martin himself is warning us of the impending dangers. The soundtrack contains 11 songs which surprised me because the music is never the center of attention, and instead was there as a supporting role, but not part of the main cast. It reminded me of a similar approach to what Jared Emerson Johnson took, the lead composer at Telltale Games. Rip Telltale. We always wanted it to be kind of supporting what was already there, right up there with it, but never pushing too far. Yeah, now. well, that's nice and all, Bearded Man, but I think I'm the one who needs the real support right now. I mean, I got house fires to prevent, land to defend and oh my goodness would you just chill for a second i was Look, literally i'm sorry just giant man please something. don't eat me giant what are you oh right hurry up and save me unfortunately buddy that's not how this works what do you mean well apparently i can't just save you from enemies no i have to fight with you on your own home island, since that's how dedicated you are to your homeland. Which brings us to the mechanics. These have a pretty simple outside. You move armies and defeat enemies while smoothly moving that camera. On the inside, once you select a specific squad, you have the ability to replenish health by either going to a house, flee by running as far from your house as possible, or use a special power. With this combination, Bad North has a pretty face but also has an intelligent brain behind it. Just like how this game looks gorgeous, but also has some tactical infantry defending this beauty, which is one of the three classes. Besides the infantry, archers and pikes also protect the land. Infantry are mighty warriors, swordsmen, if you will. Archers, no, no not the show, specialize in long range attacks and have the ability to stop boats before they can get to land. They have shields, <laughs> then, uh, darn. Pikes are similar to warriors, except their advantage is more range. But the disadvantage is having to stay still in order to attack. After protecting many islands from treachery, you gain more and more upgrade coins. Once you get to level 7, you have the ability to change one of your classes into one of three types. Past that point, one can start to gain special abilities depending on the defender. Infantry upgrades are shields, jumping off a ledge, which I, I don't understand why that's not in the preset attacks, but okay, and adding more troops. Archers, Greg, stop it! 
can send a swarm of arrows on an impending enemy group. Finally, pikes. What do pikes do in Bad North? These are the top results. Look, I, I, I barely use pikes in the game, okay? Don't, don't make the same mistake I did. <laughs> Finally, pikes can charge in a straight line if you upgrade them. The other perks for protecting islands are the free upgrades you can obtain if you are successful on the islands. The prize in the mystery box can be any of three things. More members in a squad, a hammer, or a bomb. The hammer and bomb are super effective and can annihilate enemy groups but it causes friendly fire. Which I learned the hard way. <laughs> Gosh darn it, all my squad members are dead. Looks like I have to restart the entire game with a brand new map, which yes, makes this game extremely replayable, but I just put three hours in this game, so I think I'm allowed to be a little upset. Especially since this is my third time dying. First of all, I got tricked by the relaxing and smooth graphics, but then all of a sudden, one specific enemy runs from the group for no reason at all, and rushes to the house to set it on fire. Which gives you a rush of adrenaline in 0.2 seconds as you attempt to break your mouse to move all of your squads to the literal house fire. A similar situation occurred when there was only one enemy boat at a time, but as soon as an additional boat arrived, which is when the mayhem begun. Due to the fact that now you have to split parties to try to gauge which side has weaker enemies depending on the type, as well as the amount of soldiers in the boats. But the more you think, the closer the enemies get. In both situations, my total squads went from about six to two. So that really didn't make me happy. <laughs> Second is the arrangement of the squads that I had. What I originally had was two infantry squads and two archer squads. Thinking to myself, Oh, this is good because now I can split up my, my, my squads evenly and everything will be okay. Let me tell you, I was wrong. <laughs> this is because sometimes one side is heavier than the other. So then you have to gauge which to be the weaker side. So that way you can leave just an archer. But if they have shields, then the archers are useless. Not to mention the fact that as you go on, the enemies get more difficult. Wow, no surprise, that's like, what, every video game ever? Meaning it's better to have more people on the ground, on the front lines, rather than above shooting down. So then I switched to three infantry and one archer, so that way I'm heavy on the ground, but not putting all my eggs in one basket. Once I upgraded all the infantry to their highest levels, I then attempted to max out the archers, so that way it's basically death from above. This worked great, and I made it to the final stage. But right before the final stage, I lost all but two squads. And that's probably because I wasn't using the most powerful class in the game, the pikes. See, the pikes are slowest for their attacks. At first, it got annoying when they couldn't attack while being mobile, which was my initial reason for trashing them in the first place. Once I ordered them to the front lines, it became painstakingly obvious that the damage that they deal is a one-shot kill. But I didn't realize that until the island before the final stage. <laughs> Listen, whether you're using pikes or not, you still have to be on the lookout for big boats, when to use the spacebar, and when to flee. The big boats contain the most amount of enemies, and if you're unlucky enough, you can lose half of your squad due to the boat launching your soldiers into the deep ocean. Which is a pretty shallow thing for them to do. If only <laughs> I could have slowed down time to give me time to process if any of my squads were near the boat's land impact. Oh wait, it's called the space bar, which is a very easy way to order all of your troops to different locations when there's about, oh, I don't know, 20 boats headed your way. Yikes. That's a big yikes for me. Eddie, don't sue me. But since I didn't hit the bar of space, I could just flee, which is actually a choice if there are a few boats already on the island, and means that the squads that didn't die can return back to your roster, despite the fact that you don't earn any coins from fleeing, even though that's really the only downside. Once you flood the scene,
the map is in full focus. On the left, we have the impending doom, that is, the wave, which you constantly have to stay away from, otherwise, you're dead, son. On the center slash right is where the gambling happens. Because here's the deal. You're faced with taking a risky action in the hope of a desired result. You could either possibly get to squad members, or you can get a mystery box item. Go for the squads! If you move too quickly from island to island, you won't be strong enough for the final battle, but if you go too slow, you'll die to the wave. Take your time and upgrade your squads to prepare for the final battle. After battle, your teams get fatigued. Unless you press next turn. Which I didn't do, so I lost the squad because of it. <sighs> when it finally came time for the final stand, I only had an archer and a pike. In my condition, there was literally no way I could complete the final island without dying. Unless I was clever. See, this entire time, I was actually fleeing as if my name was Shaggy Rogers, so I figured I'd use the same approach on the last island. But much like Mystery Incorporated, you can't run from your problems forever, and eventually, you have to accomplish the task head on. I fled the island, thinking I was clever, thinking I beat the system, thinking that the monster that's chasing me would finally run out of stamina. But then I was brought back to the main menu. Honestly, if this didn't happen and the game just rolled credits, I would be a bit upset because this would be an extremely lackluster way to conclude a game. Instead, Plausible Concept figured that you should probably finish the game in a fair way and not cower like an idiot, like myself. And my initial plan was to beat this game before writing out my thoughts in a cohesive and very descriptive manner on Google Docs. But due to time constraints, I looked up the ending. And... It just kinda ends? It wasn't until this point that I realized there's no story. Usually when a situation like this occurs, I start to overthink and ask myself, what was the point? What was it leading to? Why can't I have more than four squads? But I didn't. And that's because this game is so good that a story isn't necessary. It's a good game to turn your brain off after a whew, long day of work and you want a game that's relaxing and not so visually strenuous but also want a little bit of a challenge. The soundtrack doesn't do a lot which means that you can actually listen to something while playing the game just as I did. So thank you Jim Gaffigan. If you want to stream a game but don't want to be so invested that you're ignoring the chat, this game would be great for that. For Bad North specifically, what lacks in story makes it up behind the scenes. As Oscar showed in Console 2018 as he broke down the construction of the visual assets. In this, Oscar demonstrated procedural generation, a method of creating data algorithmically, as opposed to manually, basically like Minecraft. The concept of borders, not textures, the symmetry which relates to iconography, establishing and breaking patterns, the respect abstractions, and minimal labor costs to be able to produce assets at a faster rate. If the concept of making video games interests you, the full keynote will be in the description. I'm truly astonished that literally three people made this game. It's ridiculous that such a visually pleasing game that not only from a design standpoint is simple yet incredible with gameplay that's entertaining by being both relaxing and challenging, but had such an insanely small team to fully flesh out such a particular take on the strategic genre of gaming.